<laughs> Hi everybody and welcome to Ask Auntie D live from the Balls to Cancer Facebook page. Um, I'm also obviously as per usual going live via my Facebook page so we can all talk to each other and have a chat. Um, so again, going to Thursday, 7 to 8 o'clock and here we are. Um, I don't know, can I just say, look, I feel a little bit down in the dumps today, guys. Um, yeah, it's really strange. Hiya, Chris, um, the lovely Chris. Um, I went to see her during the week because um, she was helping helping us out um, for a young person who was moving out of a refuge into her own little flat. Um, loads of people helped us out, to be fair. And do you know something? That's what I love about the about you guys, about normal everyday people. It's like we seem to be able via the power of social media to just put a little a little message, a little request out for help, and you just don't even hesitate. You offer you know donations, furniture, clothes, food everything can it's all like it, it, it's just it's truly truly heartwarming um yeah i don't know what's wrong with me tonight guys i was like i've been, I've been all right i've had a nice little busy little busyish day um a couple of things i suppose it's one of them and it you kind of can't plan for things can you it's like i went to bed last night woke up and blah 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 had this to do had that to do and Got a bit of fuel underway. Yeah, guess what I did today? <laughs> Probably gonna get into trouble. Um hang on a minute. I'm just checking to see if the kids are listening. I went for am I allowed to say it? I don't really want to um I don't want I don't want to promote um fast food joints. Um, but I will. <laughs> the golden arch. Yeah, you know, like you know, the one that's shaped like, like that. The golden arch. <laughs> <laughs> you know the one. Um, it's got a drive-through, <laughs> and I think um, I think someone called Ronald works there. Um. Yeah, so in the tipping down rain this morning, I thought I'm going to need some some fuel because I don't want to go out there like and um, waste away because <laughs> I didn't know when my next food group was coming. So yeah, nipped into and um, oh, had a banging banging breakfast. Yeah, um, extra hash brown um, had to be done just in case. But yeah, so um, yeah, that was uh, that was to start the day off. <laughs> that Ronald is a right clown. You're right, sure. Um, yeah, so it, it's been. I don't know. I think it's been. I've had a real sort of. What's the word? The PA. I've got the PA here again. Say hello. Hello, everybody. Oh, there she is. Bless. So she'll be keeping. Um, you on track. Keeping me on track. <laughs> Good luck to you with that one. Oh, no. And I've. Uh, Obviously, you know, for our special guest, because we have got a special guest coming up today. And um, yeah, so hiya, Cheryl. Um, God, I don't know what's wrong with me, honest to God. But um, first, well, not first of all, because obviously I've already been speaking. Mm -hmm. But second of all, I would just like to say to someone who is very, very special to me. Um, well, he's part of a couple who's very, very special to me. Um, I'd like to say a massive, happy, happy, sorry, happy heavenly birthday to the man who gave us the legend that is Mark Bates. Um, unfortunately, it's you know he he passed away, and it's his birthday today. And and I'm kind of feeling it a bit as well because I, it's it's kind of like you can't times a healer, the big massive saying times a healer. I don't think it is. Do you know what I mean? I think I think you just you just miss people more. And um, but obviously you know I'd also like to. It, it, it's horrible, isn't it? Because 
I think without events and circumstances that happen in our lives, it's kind of like, you know, would we have had balls to cancer? Would we have ever met, you know, the amazing Mark and Susan? Because they are amazing. I know I keep saying they're amazing, but, you know, just no harm to keep telling people, does it? Um, I don't think I'd tell them if they weren't amazing, to be fair. I'd probably just, huh? But, yeah, but the same, you know, you just can't lie. So how is everybody? Come on, cheer me up a little bit. Lee Allen wants to know where's the sportswear? Lee and <laughs> we have we have a question. <laughs> right, so Lee, my little hobnob friend, I'm getting a bit paranoid now because you and Chrissy are in here and I got a little bit jealous the other day because you know you're both my friends in your own individual rights. So Lee wants to know where is my sportswear? Well, Lee, I only like to put it on sort of like once a once a month. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, not once a year. I like to don the sportswear once uh, once a month. Um, and obviously when I put it on, it's so hard to take it off because it's the same as everything and that you really get into the swing of things. So I went <laughs> I went all out. I went all out, did a bit of exercise after me little live last week. Um, yeah, whatever. No, but do you know what it is? Today... I am modelling, shall we use the word modelling, balls to cancers, Christmas range. What do you think of that? We've got, as well, a new updated website. So all you have to do is follow, is, is look at ballstocancer.com and you will see all the amazing, amazing things that they have on sale, as long as well as the amazing things that they do for people as well. But obviously, let's just push this bit because, you know, they've got the merchandise, you've got some lovely T-shirts and, you know, obviously, you know, you can purchase my sports gear that I wore last week. But yeah, I'm feeling very um, festive. We've got a comment. We've got a comment. Is it about my jingle balls? Wally Wombat says. Oh God, Wally Wombat. Does anyone know Wally Wombat? I'll tell you about our Wally Wombat. Wally Wombat. I'm actually dreading what Wally Wombat's about to say, but let's hear what Wally Wombat has got to say. <laughs> you look sexy in whatever you wear. Oh, <laughs> Wally Wombat says I look sexy in whatever I wear. Well, consider, considering <laughs> me, I met Wally Wombat when I did my first ever pantomime last year. And I must admit, his costumes, he's the, you know, all I was going to say is one of the best pantomime dames I have ever worked yeah. with. He's actually the only yeah. pantomime dame I've ever, I've ever worked with. <laughs> but I must, you know, I've got to say, he actually really, really is. Don't tell him I told him this. He's so funny. Um, I think even when he's not trying to be funny, he's funny. Um, and I know that if I was standing next to him now, you know, wearing my Jingle Balls t shirt. Sorry, sit he, back a bit, back. We can't see them on the screen. Back. Hang on a minute. I'm just going back. This could um, this could be a bit of a disaster. Hang on a second. Ta -da! <laughs> I know he would personally want to jingle my balls. Mm -hmm. <coughs> we've got a lovely comment from the beautiful Leslie Ann. Oh, we've got a comment from the lovely look. <laughs> Do you know? And I don't know why I'm going. Does it mention my singing? Well, she just said thank you for the serenade. So what's that all about? Right, Leslie Ann has has just commented, "Thank you, Auntie D, for the lovely serenade." Right. Sometimes I have my moments, yeah, and I just took it upon myself the other day to land myself in poor Leslie Ann's front garden and just sing Happy Birthday. Um, I'm not the best singer in the world. <laughs> the broken window shots have her back. Yeah, hence, hence she sent me a bill for three broken windows. <laughs> so, three broken windows and a smashed TV screen. And I think I'd only got to the first verse. 
um but you know it is, it's little things isn't it it's like we've we've been through these strange times we've been locked down we haven't been able to go out and we've been allowed to introduce like these little bubbles and blah 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 and and it, it, it's just nice isn't it if you can do something nice for someone do something nice so yeah so oh bless her um you took a deep breath while you're deep breathing. I know you have to breathe, obviously, because it'd be really strange if you didn't breathe. But you got a question. I've got a comment. Question. We've got a question. Christine B. Taylor. Oh, Chris, you all right, my darling? She wants to know is your birthday live next week. Wow. This is wow. Right. It's my birthday next week, guys. Um. <laughs> yeah next thursday and guess where i'm gonna be i'm gonna be here with you lovely lot on ask auntie d via, via sorry i've just seen a comment that's come up via um balls to cancer facebook live and do you know why because i love you i absolutely love you and i'm too scared to go into a pub or a club or a restaurant so <laughs> <laughs> so yes i will be here next thursday for my birthday um i might swap the tea for a little glass of prosecco but i'll have to have a word i was like, am i allowed to drink on lives let me just wait for this one to pop up am i allowed to drink alcohol on lives well, he hasn't said no, so I'm, I'm, I'm very well might. Oh, no, I'm not going to not do in Panto this year. Um, I went to visit the people at the Mary Stevens Hospice today. Um, and unfortunately, they've had to cancel their pantomime this year um, due to all the restrictions and things. Um of not knowing when theatres are reopening, social distancing, etc., etc., etc. So they've had to cancel their pantomime this year. But while we're actually talking about pantomimes, I know this isn't a pantomime, but please, guys, um, every year in November, Balls to Cancer put on an amazing Christmas ball. Now we're about twelve weeks away from Christmas, aren't we? Oh Hence why. I'm advertising the Christmas range. You want to pull up your jingle bars a bit higher? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, oh, it's not enough. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hence why I'm advertising their Christmas range. Anyway, back to what I was saying. Fingers crossed, all, all steam ahead. There has been no sign as of yet of us having to cancel the Christmas ball. So please note, it's an amazing night with amazing people. Um, so you can book your tickets, you can book your tickets online. Um, and again, it's just, you know, that, a brilliant entertainment. I mean, last year I turned up <laughs> yeah, with some, well, I was glad for me, you know, probably no diff, looking no different to any other year, to be fair, <laughs> but I, I turned up, you know, not far in, um, I just managed to get rid of the panto costume on my way through the door, but like they had the gold glitter all up my face and blah, 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 but it was brilliant. Um, so yes, don't forget, as of now, you can still book tickets for this year's Christmas ball, and it'd be absolutely amazing amazing to see you all there no that's not me presuming that i'm going to be invited to the ball <laughs> they can't get rid of me that quick and Cher has asked um do you know what the theme will be this year at the christmas ball well Cher, i think i've got an idea it hasn't actually been confirmed as yet um but it will be something that we'll be releasing as soon as possible. But I think, I think I've got a very good idea. Um, do you know, hang on a minute. You all right there, son? Yeah, me and my daughter are having a conversation. You see, this is what, no one will talk to anybody in this house, but the second you're either on the phone or you're on a live, people start, people start coming around. Say hello, you, you come over and give mommy a hug. 
Don't make it sure. No, he's got a leg in it in the I opposite direction. He's got a leg in it in the opposite direction. Let's just have a sweep of me too. So, don't leave us hanging. See, he, he takes this opportunity, oh. my son does. He takes this opportunity when he knows I can't move from oh. my office to go through my secret biscuit cupboard because that's exactly what he's doing. He's rooting through my biscuit oh. cupboard. You're brave. It doesn't sound it doesn't sound too good. Um so yes, yeah, so has everyone been okay? Huh? I'm not telling people what the theme is. No, I said I think I, I could hazard a guess what it is, and I think I do know what it is, but I'm not releasing the theme. Um and thank you, Mark, for saying that yes, I can drink next week. So that'll be That'll be interesting. No. So, guys, today was a bit of a hard one. Um, last week, we were joined by the, oh, my God. He's just dumped a biscuit in my, oh, my, oh my goodness. Did you see what he's just done? He's just dumped a biscuit in my cup of tea. Do you know something? Kids, what can I say? Um... Sorry, I'll let you do it now. Hang on. Thanks. Keep it I'm speechless. I'm absolutely speechless. Um, because he's kind of throwing me a bit now. Anyway, last week we were joined by the awesome Matt Leticia. I had a really, really nice chat with him today. And obviously, you know, I I, I must apologize to our guest today. Because I've been out and about a lot today, so I didn't have a chance to post as many clues as I wanted to post. Um, but as you've probably all seen, we are going to be joined tonight by Steve Clamp. And the same as last week, we've been putting some like clues out and about. And obviously, everyone's had a chance to guess who who our you know who our guest is going to be. Um, it was a real hard one today. And not a lot of people have actually guessed, but we've got a few. So what we've done is everyone who has guessed correctly, we've put their names on our, what did I call it last week? We're... Spinner of winners. And yes, and if your name is drawn, you can have the chance to win a Balls to Cancer badge. Look at that little beauty. And even if you don't win, you can buy one of these little beauties via the Balls to Cancer website, because that's what they're called, websites. Ooh. Yeah. So how's my watch party going? Going good. People have had a great laugh at you. I know. Great laugh at him. I think it's taking a liberty. Because you know what? There's nothing worse. That You know when you get to the bottom, now, bottom of a cup of tea, and you find like loads of like biscuit bits. That just completely defeats the object to me today. Oh my goodness. I've just noticed Cher. Now I first met Cher four years ago, possibly four years ago. And I met her at the Balls to Cancer Christmas Ball. And an item on Cher's bucket list was to have a photo taken with me. Now, I kind of laughed it off at the time because I'm like, that can't be right. That can't be right. Surely someone's actually put on a bucket list that they want a photo taken with me. But it turns out that it was. Now, Cher has just commented to say, I've had the all clear today, Auntie D. Oh. She's going to crying. I haven't started crying. But all scans and bloods were all clear with no cancer. That's brilliant. No cancer present. That definitely deserves an alcoholic drink beverage. Oh, maybe, maybe share. Sure. Sure. Maybe you should say that. Oh, that is just absolutely fantastic news. Absolutely. I'm not. I'm not wiping my eyes with an antibacterial wipe. Oh man, that is just fantastic. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, and it's horrible, isn't it? It's like this bloody disease, this horrible, horrible disease. It 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 just 
strikes all the best the best people do you know what i'm saying it's uh it's horrible flipping out Got a tissue? No, I'm all right. Use your jingle balls. I'm going to use my jingle balls t-shirt and wipe my eyes in a minute. But, um, yeah, anyway, I think I, think I should have worn my snood. Because my hair's a bit of a... I mean, I wouldn't have gone so far as to say a disaster. <laughs> I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say my hair's a disaster. I'd just say it's a bit of a disaster. Oh, God bless her. She just wanted to make sure she was here to let us all know today. And well, good. I'm glad I've started you off because I don't want to be the only one crying. Bloody hell! Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Hormones, hormones. Ooh, it was a bit, bit. <laughs> God, I'm a wreck. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm just an absolute wreck. Anyone else got anything they want to talk yeah. about? Anna Kearns. Oh. Sorry if I pronounced your surname wrong. Huh? What? When are you getting one of our team on? Now, I don't understand this bit. L-F-C-Y-N-W-A. You see, um, this is from a complete and utter. Um, when are we getting one of our team on? LFC, Liverpool Football Club. Oh, we're never getting one of them on. Do you know what I mean? It's like, Anna, you know how much love I've got for you. The PA apparently does the bookings and she's a Manchester United supporter. Well, well, it's a good job the guy that uh, runs the charity is a Liverpool supporter, <laughs> so it's actually nothing to do. It's nothing to do with um, with her at all. Do you know, it's kind of like, oh, oh, can you like imagine, it. Anna? I swear to God, if ever I had to sit here and um, and ever found out that a, a member of like Liverpool, past or present, was coming up, I'd, I'd probably just have a heart attack and die. <laughs> yeah, because I do, I, I do get a little bit starstruck, to be fair. And I don't know how I held myself last week when. Um, well, but like when Matt, Matt Letizia was on, because it, it, it's one of them, isn't it? And you'll see probably the same here, because I'm so stuck in this. It's like, you kind of like, like look at people. And I'm, I'm going to bring our special guest on in a minute. Um, and it's kind of weird, because when, when I first went to the Balls to Cancer Ball, you kind of don't realise that when you're booked to, you know, when you're booked, when they, not booked, I wouldn't call it booking. Obviously they ask you, you know, would you like to come and blah, blah, blah. And you're like, oh yeah, thank you. That would be great, blah, blah, blah. And they class you as like a VIP guest. And when you kind of don't see yourself as a VIP and like you walk into the room and you're like, and, and I remember and I was saying, I was like, oh my God, I've seen them on the telly. And, Oh my God, I've seen him on the telly. And then, like, people are like, yeah, but you've been on the telly too. And you're kind of like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, a bit strange. And anyway, I think I've got everybody absolutely, everyone's starting to cry now because, oh, I don't know. So, what I'm going to do, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to have a little sip of my tea. Still haven't got my balls to cancer mug. Put my cup down. And I am going to welcome to our Ask Auntie D live, Mr. Steve Clamp. Hello there, how are you doing? Hello, Steve. I've seen you on the telly. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, how are you? I'm all right. You're obviously enjoying uh, Liverpool's success then. Oh, can you tell? <laughs> very subtle see we tried to get a steve clamp flag for today <laughs> um, but apparently someone called steve clamp bought them all so <laughs> <laughs> oh bless you it's so lovely to see you again steve and thank you for being our special guest this week that's quite all right i had no idea what to expect but here i am slightly nervous i'm usually the one asking questions Oh, no, no need to be nervous. <laughs> so we just want to say, I'm going to start off, first of all, Steve, how did you get involved with being an ambassador for Balls to Cancer? I don't know. Do you know, I think I was just contacted um, probably via Twitter, I think. And 
my dad, uh, he, he died of cancer. He had prostate cancer, which led to other things. Long time ago, he died quite young. And uh, so as soon as they got in contact, I was really keen to, to help out in the best way I could, really, because obviously, you know, men don't talk about these things much, do they? Especially, you know, down the private parts. So the more we can relax that and get people to talk and keep awareness out there. I think if my dad had been more aware, you know, he would have gone to the doctor sooner and uh, could possibly have been saved, you know. So um, that's really just what I'm hoping we can all help that, really, because there's a lot of people dying unnecessarily. Yeah, I mean, it is kind of, a, it is, it, it, it's a strange one, isn't it? Because it's like, why do you think men are so, like, you know, reluctant to kind of like, because my dad was exactly the same. It's kind of like, he just would never go to see a doctor. I think, for me, I think it's one of two things. Men either put all that stuff down to banter, so they can never talk about it seriously, because everything is a laugh with a guy. Um, or they're just embarrassed. I think men also get embarrassed very easily. And you're either at one end of that spectrum or the other, but you're never at the bit in the middle where you actually will talk seriously about it and, you know, raise your concerns. We all think we're going to live forever, don't we? And I think it's the case of everyone. But as, as you get older, perhaps I think women become a bit more wise to the fact they're not going to live forever if, if they're not careful. I'm not sure men ever do. They just keep thinking we're the big strong ones. We'll keep going. I mean, I think, you know, we can kind of hope, I suppose, that it's not as much as a stigma as it used to be, is it, you know, and obviously with the charities like Balls to Cancer and stuff, I mean, obviously, it's obvious, you know, they they specifically started to target, target sorry, obviously, prostate cancer. And, um, I, I, you know, it, it's just, constant. I suppose it's just telling each other and telling your partners and telling your friends and, you know, to make it a bit more light-hearted, check your balls, check your this, and, you know, you don't check them, I will, blah, 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 blah. So, oh, we can but hope, can't we, Steve? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, I think it, well, I think it's making a big difference. I think Balls to Cancer is doing a great job, and I think there's other charities too in between them. And I think it also helps that quite a few high-profile people, actually particularly sporty people, but high-profile people have come out and, you know, said they've had this condition or whatever and remind people to get checked. I think all that kind of thing. Bit by bit, it's not going to happen overnight, but I think bit by bit makes a difference. Oh, definitely, definitely. So shall we find out a little bit about Steve Clamp? Oh, no, here we go. <laughs> Do you know, the Christmas range, Steve, the Christmas range. <laughs> <laughs> so Steve, obviously, you know, like, when you were growing up, what did you, you know, what did you want to be when you were a, an adult? Well, the youngest memory of what I wanted to be was a dustbin man. Oh, I think they're, what are they called? Refuse collectors, is that the right right name? But I can we remember have to being, be politically correct now, don't we? Yeah. Uh, I remember being uh, a little kid, and uh, I guess this was probably before I started school, and I used to find it so exciting when they'd come round, and I'd go with my mum would take me to the end of the drive to watch the machine come and crash, crunch it all up. I used to think it was just a wonderful job. And I, the bin men used to sort of wait for me to be there because I'd wave. And if they'd got some toys or whatever in the rubbish, I remember getting a spinning top, they would save them for me and drop them off at my house. So, yeah, I wanted to be a dustbin, a dustbin man. I loved it. And I still, because of those memories, when I see them coming around now, I still get a sort of fondness for the bin men on the, on the route, refuse collectors. And, uh, yeah, so that was my earliest, my earliest wish. That changed probably as I got a bit older and... Um, and I went through different phases. I wanted to be a singer, but the sad fact is I can't sing well enough to be a singer. And I play guitar. Neither. I can give you a hang on. Let me give you. A, you can see I play a bit of guitar. But... And I was going to actually mention that. You see, I was. My next question was going to be: So when did Steve or the the inner rock star develop in Mr. Steve Clamp? Because oh you know. You do. You you're a really good guitarist, aren't you? I'm all, I'm all right. I used to be a lot better than I am now, but so I don't get much time with all the kids I've got. But uh, well, my dad was a musician. He was um, he, he managed a few bands and, and wrote a few songs and things and did some producing. And so it was a natural thing for me to want to be a part of his life because I thought it was so exciting, you know. And, and he was not a, a star of any kind, you know, not like that. But it's just I still he was so talented that I wanted to be. Take, taste a bit of that. I used to think it was wonderful when it'd be on stage and, you know, even if it was just a crowd of 100 people or whatever, I would love, I just, the pride I had in him was, was enormous. Um, and I used to, yeah, I, he taught me a bit of guitar and I had some lessons. And, and then when I went to college, I wanted to, again, having spent a lot of time in recording studios with him, I wanted to be um, a sound engineer originally. So I went to college to study all that kind of technical sound stuff. 
Uh, but we also ended up, of course, in bands and stuff because you're all quite musicy people there. And that was my goal for a long time was was to be um, to be a sound engineer with live music and rock bands and, and whatever else. So when the ch- when the change because obviously um, I have also read that you actually uh, from the change from that so when you sort of went to college to do like the sound engineering stuff obviously when kind of like um when did the career path change because it's a funny story actually with with this course one of the things we had to do was put on a tour or something i mean you have to the memories were a little bit vague because a long time ago but we had to put a tour on and, and make it all happen a professional one you know people buy tickets for them or whatever and um we formed a band and we just did it around youth hostels or whatever on a place called the Isle of Wight, which is just down, down off the South coast. And, uh, me and some other lads were in the band and I, you know, uh, we put this tour on and, uh, I was, I was just a bit of a drunken mess really, but there was a film crew that, um, joined us. And I think they were making a documentary for, I don't know, it could have been ITV or BBC. I, I really wasn't very interested in it then. But they were making a documentary about a band trying to break through, you know, and uh, we happened to be that band because we were young guys with this new band. And uh, at the end of the week, I'd been on camera a few times because they, you know, they ask you questions a bit like you do now. They're like, "Well, what are you doing?" Whatever. Again, I thought nothing of it. I wasn't excited by the whole thing. I was just into my music. And the director said to me at the end of the week, "Have you ever thought about working in television?" I said, "Well, no." He said, "You're just one of the most natural people I've ever come across on camera." And uh, when he said it, something sort of a penny dropped, and I thought, "I never even thought TV was a job." Do you know what I mean? I wasn't brought up to think about. It. TV is a job, do you know what I mean? And I said, well, what, what, what could I do? And he said, well, you could go and study journalism and try and go in that route. So after I'd done the whole music thing, I went back to college to study journalism. Uh, and another coincidence happened. While I was doing it, I was working in a supermarket. And this actor used to come in who was on TV in a few commercials and things. I think he was in a couple of small parts in films as well. And to me, I thought he was a superstar, you know, because I'd seen him on the telly. But... Uh, <laughs> He was a nice guy, you know, no ego. And uh, he um, he was asking me what I wanted to do. And so I've got this idea to be a TV presenter, you know. And uh, I, I almost feel like an idiot saying it now because, you know what I mean, everyone says that now. I don't want to be a TV presenter. And, then, though, wasn't it? Do you know what I mean? Well, it's all... in, yeah, the thing was, about a week later, he came back into the shop and he said, um, oh, you know, you said you want to be a presenter. My agent uh, in London is looking for uh, a new children's TV presenter. Would you, would you be interested? I was like, well you see the selling fish here or being a tv presenter you know what i mean so uh i said yes brilliant and he got me to meet his agent and uh, i did a little screen test they loved it they put me forward for this uh kids show with um with sky television and uh and i, and I got it the first job i ever went first tv job i ever went for with no no experience of, of any kind and uh i thought there you go i've made it i'll be a multi-millionaire within a few years quite happy <laughs> Oh, bless. So you started off in, obviously, your TV career then, in children's TV. And I loved Did it. You... Loved it. Uh, what was the TV? What, we've got a question over here. Sorry. Oh, um, what kids' TV series was it? Right. And she wants to know, what children's TV series was it, Steve? It was, <laughs> it was called Tiny and Crew. And Tiny was a big purple dinosaur, a bit like youngsters now will know of Barney, a bit like Barney. <laughs> Um, but Tiny didn't speak. Tiny just acted things out. So I was there as the kind of presenter to sort of say, "What's that, Tiny? What are you saying?" Oh yeah, we'll go and do this, you know. And we had little kids with us, and uh, yeah, it was a show. It was on a channel called the Children's Channel, which which doesn't exist now. I think it turned it became part of Living or UK Living or something on Sky. Um, I mean, I just I, I I was again I wasn't really involved with that side. It was all new to me. I just worked for a production company who were making this show, and I did did three series of it. And I also did the same show live at Wembley Arena um, with a massive crowd of little kids, you know. So oh, I, I never made Wembley as a rock star, but I did, I did make it alongside a purple dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, we've done, yeah, we've just had two completely different reactions there because obviously the, the PA, she's a bit on the older side. She obviously yeah. remembers Tiny. And then obviously when you mentioned Barney, I've got a massive Barney fan here as well. <laughs> I think they're going to compete now to see who was best. Tiny or Barney, to be fair. Honest to God. So then from, from children's TV, Steve, what did, well, well, obviously being sort of like 
well, I'm going to say, but I'm, I, when I say a bit sporty, I don't actually mean a bit sporty because I'm not sporty at all. I just like sport. Now, um, you've transferred yourself quite a bit, haven't you, in between um, some probably teams that some footballers wouldn't even dare transfer themselves between, Steve. Where yeah. did you start? first was it chelsea tv chelsea or Man TV, yeah so i was doing the kids show and then uh, somebody who was contact through the college knew somebody at chelsea football club and they were setting up uh, their own little tv station and it was really small fry in those days but not not like these big stations the clubs have got now but anyway they wanted a couple of people who were at college or whatever who could go and basically run the channel you know so all we got was a bit of expenses towards our travel and uh, so they, so I went down for an interview then and I got it and I was, the, my role was basically as a bit of a presenter, but also doing a bit of everything, a bit of the camera work, a bit of editing, all that stuff, which I was learning at college. So that helped. And then there was this one other guy called Tim, who um, I became best friends with then, we're still best friends now. He's now very successful in, uh, in with, with Sky Television, a producer there. And, uh, but anyway, we met both very inexperienced, straight from, you know, straight, both still in college actually. And uh, and I started working for Chelsea Football Club, and I did it for a couple of years. Learned a lot, you know, met some great people, and the channel started to grow. And then about two years into that, I think it's about two years, and the kids' show had finished now, and I've decided to move away from kids' TV because it's a short career. You've got to be young to do kids' stuff. Yeah. And uh, and I've done the journalism training, and, and, and I was quite enjoying that side of it a bit more. I saw Manchester United was setting up their channel, MUTV, which was bigger. Yeah. It was going on Sky. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all around the world and whatever. So, so I, you know, I slightly bigged myself up a bit more than was probably quite true, and uh, sent the CV off, got an interview, and um, and got a job there. Initially, originally as a reporter, and I later became one of their presenters. Well, wow. who would you say was um, not even what you say the best person you've ever interviewed, Steve? I mean, because obviously Chelsea, Manchester United. We're talking, like, I hate to say it, but they have got a few legends. Do you know what I mean? It's like... I think the one that stands out and is the obvious one to say is David Beckham. I uh, interviewed him a couple of times, but I did his first big interview after he got the red card for England. You may remember he kind of pretty much went into hiding, went off with Victoria, who he was, um, I think he was in, I think he was married to actually at that time, or was he just getting married, whatever. They certainly had a kid because I remember when he agreed to do the interview, um, we talked about, I think it was Romeo, who was his first child. I was asking what it's like to be a dad and how he's adapted and everything. So, and then that was particularly big because he didn't want to talk to people at the time because there was so much, you know, mob mentality towards him, this ridiculous thing we tend to get here when someone makes a mistake. And uh, and so it was really great. We had a long chat. And, um, you know, we were on kind of first name terms for a while after, as I'm sure you remember me now, but back then we were. So, yeah, it was probably, probably Beckham. But... Met a lot of great footballers. Alex Ferguson was always great because he was trying to struggle to understand what he was saying half the time. What's um, he really like? Is he, you know... I got on with him really well. I had no complaints, but he did always feel like he's not somebody you'd want to cross. Yeah. Roy Keane was another one like that. You know, I never had a problem with Roy, but you did feel like you had to be careful. And certainly my, when I was yeah. in yeah, I was only like at 21, 22. I was very young. And I remember seeing Roy about two or three years ago and he was doing some work for ITV and I was chatting to him and I said you know it's funny when I was at MUTV you know I was just a kid I said you used to scare the life out of me and he just looked at me with a glare and he said what do you mean I don't now <laughs> I absolutely love Roy Key. <laughs> it's kind of like I remember the once um obviously the Irish in us my mum, we, we were at Birmingham Airport the one day and we were collecting mum who'd come back from a trip to Ireland. And me, me and my dad were standing in arrivals at Birmingham Airport. And my dad was like, gee, he looks ever so familiar. He looks... Ever... And I'm like, looking, I'm like, dad, that's Roy Keane, that's John Odd. And we were listing all these like Irish footballers that were just walking through. And my mum comes getting pushed out in a little push chair, not a push chair, a wheelchair, sorry. And she's like, she's like, oh, I've just been having a lovely chat with a nice young man on, uh, sitting next to me on the plane. Next thing you know, Roy Keane walks up and he, lovely to meet you, Kathy says. And off he goes, and me and my dad are like, Mum, are you stupid? It's like, You've just been on the plane with the Republic of Ireland football team. Amazing. Oh. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I always think that's a funny thing with air travel is a great lever. Now, I know if you go on a big flight to America or whatever, the, the stars are going to be in first class. But if you're just doing a, a short hop somewhere to Europe, a lot of these planes, it's just standard seating wherever you go. Do you know what I mean? Unless they've chartered their own flight. And I think it's funny, you know, they have to take their own bags on because of security. You can't have someone right. do it for them. And I did this when I used to travel with Manchester United. I always thought it was like bizarre that it was the one time where these superstars actually had to put up with all the same things that we do. I think some airports now do have special ways of getting the biggest stars through. But a yeah, lot I mean, of people the case of the I tried that with me, Steve, and I'm like, no, 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 honestly, I'll just go, I'll just, I'll just go normal class. <laughs> Well, it's like, but it's true what you say because I remember coming out and I like saying to Dad, I said, Dad, I said, I'm sure Roy Keane standing at the bus stop over there, <laughs> he's actually waiting for a bus to take him, take him back to. Honest to God, it was just really strange. Yeah. So yeah. obviously, then again, you transferred yourself, and because for a while, did you you gave up the sports reporting, didn't you? And did you go into like, I say yeah. normal. You know what I mean, Steve. Yeah, well, um, I, by then I was, uh, I'd gone to Sky Sports and did a couple of years presenting on, on Sky Sports News with them, which was, again, another great learning curve because I got that very young and I was very thankful to them for risking it with me because, you know, I, I was still not the finished product. And uh, that was great. But then I saw a job with the BBC and it had been a lifetime's ambition to work for them. So um, I applied for that, and I got lucky enough. Lucky, lucky enough, the head, the boss there at the time was quite a big fan of Sky Sports News, so he'd seen me a lot on the telly. So I think that helped my chances. Anyway, I went to work for them uh, for two or three years in the Midlands, uh, and again had a great time. Really great people. And then ITV offered me a job to go and be the, the main presenter of one of their regions, uh, which was the East Midlands, uh, covers Nottingham, Leicestershire, and, and Derbyshire, all that kind of way. And uh, I thought, yeah, I really fancy that, you know, being the main main presenter. So I've done it a lot standing in on Midlands Today when uh, Nick Owen wasn't there. But, yeah, I really fancied it. When, and I, had, I, love it. I loved it. I've been so blessed with all the jobs I've had, one after another. is sort of, you know, just, just absolutely loved it. And I did that for three years. And then there was a bit of reorganisation there. I went off to ITN, the, the national news, uh, the guys who went to national news for a while. And then, and then came back to do take over the sport department at Central. Wow, and how long have you been at Central News, Steve? Well, if you count it from the very beginning, I went there in 2005, and it's the wow. first time I've stayed at for more than three years, so it's quite a long, really 15 years. All the others were never more than three, and I always thought, I'll do three years and I'll go somewhere else, or as it was, apart from the little spell I did at ITN, which was connected anyway, being part, part of ITV's coverage. Uh, yeah, 15 years, can't believe it. It's an absolute lifetime, you know. Wow, wow. We've got a question, Steve. One of the questions is, not football related, but during your time as a journalist, who is the, was it said, who's the most favourite person you've ever interviewed? Because I do know you have interviewed some big names, Steve. Yeah, I don't know. Favourite's hard because generally most people I interview or get on with, I mean, a real, really good time when I did some stuff with Bradley Walsh and uh, um, Patrick Kilty. He was great fun. I had a really good giggle with Patrick Kilty. Um, and also, oh, his name's escaped me at the moment. His guy does the stuff with the dogs. Oh, he's he's brilliant. He's on radio. Oh, he's on radio. Oh, he's on radio. He was great. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you a funny experience I have in the interview I did. I interviewed uh, the, the rock singer Brian Adams some years ago. And... Uh, I was, well, we were all set to go, and, and he's a, a lot shorter. I'm six foot five, and, and Brian Adams is only, I think he's about five foot five or something. So, for a guy that's on the shortish side, isn't it? I hope I'm not offending anyone. Um, when I'm six foot five, that's a big difference, isn't it? So, yeah. I think we, we, we were setting up to go, and they were trying to get the shot, so he looked about right. And he had to nip off somewhere, and he was with this woman, and the woman stayed, and I was chatting to her for a while. She was a lot taller than him, I noticed. And we had a good chat. She was really nice, very pleasant. He came back, we did the interview, and then off they went. And this guy came up to me and said, oh, my God, I can't believe you've just been chatting to Al McPherson. I said, what do you mean? He said, that woman was Al McPherson. I didn't realise for a second. So there you go, one of the most famous supermodels in the world and uh, completely straight over my head. Are you, are you sure you didn't know Steve Clark? <laughs> well, I gave her my number. She didn't want it, but I gave her it. <laughs> oh, bless. Honest to God. I got we got another question. What do you like or dislike about 
being a journalist. What do you like or dislike most about being a journalist? Uh, I like the, the different people you meet. No, no two days are the same. I think what's really exciting, especially the program I work on now with uh, Central News, is that you go into a meeting at 9.15 in the morning and you don't have a pro. There is no program that exists at 9.15 in the morning. And by six o'clock in the evening, you and the rest of the team, from largely from scratch, you might have one or two features pre-filmed, but largely from scratch, you've created a program. You've made the calls, you've got the people to agree to be interviewed, you've been out and filmed them, you've edited it, you've got it all shaped. And I think that's quite remarkable. You, you think it takes a year to make a film and it takes several months to make a drama. And we do the whole program, the whole half an hour, from 9.15 in the morning to 6 p.m. in the evening. Of course, that's the same with all big news programs, but I just find it thrilling that that happens. And sometimes I have to take a step back and go, isn't this bizarre? We're having a chat now about what we're going to make. And we're not going to make it next week or in the months ahead. We are going to make that today, turn it around and get it on the telly for 6 o'clock this evening. That's really thrilling. What don't I like? I don't like all the phone calls, actually. I know that's a huge thing for a journalist. I don't like, I've never liked phone calls. I don't even phone anyone I know. My friends will tell you, I don't call anybody. The only person I ever phone is my mum, and that's maybe once a week or something. My friends, it's text, it's text. I never phone people. Uh, my wife, I don't even know. I think my wife and I have spoken on the phone maybe four or five times in the seven years we've been together. Really? Just, yeah, but obviously with my job, you have to phone people, and a lot of people yeah. you don't know. You're just ringing, going, hi. Uh, I wonder if you'd be around within the next three hours to talk to me about this. Pretty please, please, pretty please. Will you please, 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 please? Yeah, um, it's yeah. like you probably think to yourself, when I'm at home, I just don't want to look at a phone. I don't want to answer a phone. Yeah. <laughs> I I know, know, talking to people on the phone. <laughs> so, yeah, there are a lot of phone calls. But you know, there's some people at work, well, most of them, to be honest with you, don't, don't, it doesn't bother them at all. But for me, it's part of the job I don't like. So, you know, I'll happily go filming in the pouring rain. Doesn't bother them. I, I enjoy all that. I like the challenge of it. Do you know what I mean? That's part of the challenge. But I just phone calls. They, they do my head in. <laughs> and another question for Steve. What football team, if any, do you support? Do you know, I don't have a, a diehard uh, following the team. I grew up around Portsmouth Way, and that was the first team I used to go and watch. My mum used to take me down to Fratton Park. So I've just got a bit of a soft spot for them. Um, but it's... I, I used to, as a kid, the only football that really excited me was watching England. I just, that's, you know, that's when I would be very excited. Then, of course, I went to work for Chelsea and inevitably the first big football club I was involved with, I developed a soft spot for them. And I was there at such a great time. Glenn Hoddle was manager when I arrived and then he brought in Rud Hullet, you know, world, former World Player of the Year. And I was there when Viali came with Gianfranco Zola and players like that. And it was an extraordinary time to be part of a football club. And, and we were, it was a can you believe Chelsea was a smaller club? But it was a smaller club then, even though they were going on to great success. And I was right in there in the mix of it, you know. So that was that was wonderful. And then Manchester United, again, I was soft spot for them. My granddad, who died when I was only two, but my granddad was a big Manchester United fan. He was from Manchester. And uh, I was brought up knowing that. So I had a soft spot for them, but obviously luckily worked for them. And then finally, <laughs> it's a lot of clubs, I know. Um, Notts County, my great granddad was a Notts County player. He died in the war. Um, but he played for them, was one of their best players, apparently, according to the history books. And um, it just happens that my wife and all her family are Notts County supporters. So I've got a soft spot for Notts County. Unfortunately, they're not in the greatest shape at the moment, having dropped out of the football league. But um, So, yeah, I've got a soft spot for a lot of football clubs, but I don't have a diehard following of any. The only team I've been to see week in, week out for any period of time was Chelsea. And that was partly because I was working there and because I got involved with all the people and, and whatever. So... There's a few clubs I look out for the results for, but it's quite nice actually because I don't have that. I mean, I get told I'm biased towards Aston Villa, and I literally, would, if, if I pull up emails telling me I'm Villa but a fan or I'm a Birmingham fan or a Wolves fan, I think well, at least they all think you're biased to someone else. So that probably shows I'm giving them all reasonable coverage. And I think that's why I was asked to ask you that question because obviously, you know, when you watch you obviously presenting your sports on Central News. It is kind of like you, you don't really give much away and you are looking, you're like, well, I don't know if he's a Villa fan or a Blues fan or a Wolves fan. So I thought, someone's obviously thought the same. I thought, I'm just going to ask him now. So next time when they watch you, it'll be, well, I know he's not biased towards them now, but it's not looking good for Villa, is it, Steve? 
No, it's not. And do you know what? Uh, what? What I will say is that, and this is absolutely hand on heart, I'm not just saying this because the job I do, I genuinely want all our teams to do well because my job is so much more pleasurable. And I'm, and I'm involved with those clubs and I get to know them on, on a level and I want them to succeed. And, and I genuinely, doesn't matter if that's Birmingham City or if it's Aston Villa or Wolves or Nottingham Forest or Leicester, I really want them to succeed. Makes my makes my job easier and happier yeah. to do for one. Uh, but Aston Villa, yeah, I mean, Dean Smith, the manager there, he is such a nice guy. I knew him quite a lot at Walsall, and uh, it's such a big job at Villa. It's difficult to take a club up as quickly as he did. Yeah. I think maybe, maybe they went up a season too soon. If he'd had a, another season to build and, and structure his team a bit better, they might have got the Premier League a little bit more prepared. So what I'm really hoping is that if they go down, that Villa show faith in Dean Smith. And I know that a lot of fans are already saying he's got to go, but that's what fans do, isn't it? You can't you've got to almost keep your head. Burnley did it. They went down, kept the manager, and then came back with a better squad, of, you know, a squad that was more fitting for the Premier League. And I think if they go down, I'd like to see them keep Dean Smith and give him another year, to, to, to and assuming he gets them back up again. I think they could then be a, a much more of a force in the Premier League. It is so tough up there uh, yeah. to survive the wolves are a great example really of how it can be done but they've spent money well a lot of money very wisely they've managed to bring in obviously a lot of very skilled portuguese players um they seem to be buying into this wolves project so maybe that's something villa need to do is really look at a long-term project to convince players to come great manager there as well obviously that's he's proven that time and time again so yeah but for villa it's it's a tough one really tough Oh. Well, Steve, thank you ever so much for taking time out to come and talk to us today. Now, if I, if I hadn't have chatted you for too long, I'd, I'd have made you take down one of them guitars and maybe... Will we be seeing you performing on the stage at a Balls to Cancer Ball any time soon? Not until I've had some practice, let me tell you. But, uh, maybe, maybe one day when I've had too many to drink. Well, that's the plan. So I'm going to have a word with Mark and Sue and we might ply you with a bit of alcohol <laughs> this, you know, this year or next year. But Steve, thank you so much and love to you and your lovely wife and your children. And thanks for supporting Balls to Cancer. Please carry on supporting Balls to Cancer and look after yourself and we'll speak to you soon. Well, do lovely to talk to you well and for all you're doing in this dreadful lockdown time we're all in. So yeah, love to everybody. Same to you two. You take care, Steve. <laughs> Bye. <coughs> oh, what a lovely guy. I've got these lot like, beating each other up now behind me, as you can see, like I'm starting to see. Um, what a really nice guy. So <laughs> I dread to think where this is going because the boy child is crawling under my table. Hang on a minute. What do you want? What do you want? Oh, kids, I. So, everybody, we're nearly at the end of another. I forgot what we were called then. Oh. Ask Auntie Day. Huh? It's, oh. like, it's been one of them. It's been one of them nights, I think. People, um, that's a bit of emotion. Um, hello to everybody that I've missed saying hello to. Obviously, while talking to Steve. Um, thank you to those who sent in questions. Put my chocolates back. <laughs> and hi, Elaine. And we, we, you know, I will have a chance to, you know, I'm going to pick a week now where it's, it's going to be all about you guys. And I'm going to get you guys on here and we'll have a good little, a, you know, a good little session. When I say session, a little chat and a little talk. And because I want to find out about you guys as well. Joe, Fitzy, Fitzy, Oh, is Fitzy on? Yeah. Oh. Do you know what I forgot to do? Me winner, spinner. Oh, no, and I've lost Steve. Oh, no. See, I mentioned that before Mark come on and said, who's the winner off the spinner? I am Kathleen G's camera shy all of a sudden. Yeah, trust me, he's not camera shy. So remember, guys, before we finish, we're going to spin the to winner, win. spinner. Win. And there's not many names on, on, on it this week because Steve was a really hard one to get. Come say hello, you little gorgeous child of mine. And you can win one of the Balls to Cancer lovely badges. So come on then, PA. Oh, there we go. Still can't get the staff. <laughs> You're not paying them enough? Apparently I'm not paying them enough. I'm not paying you nothing. I'm feeding you. Right, tap to, <laughs> tap to spin. Right. The winner of the Balls to Cancer Mac badge is... 
<laughs> it's fixing! <laughs> oh my goodness. Fitzy, God bless you. You've won a Mac badge, um, as well as my heart, because you know you've won my heart from the first day that I ever met you. So, guys, what can I say? Fitz is the winner of the spinner. And again, join me, please, next week for me birthday, 21. I'm going to celebrate in style. <laughs> what, are you what are you laughing for? I am 21. But remember, oh, got a comment. oh, I'm just about to lock off, but Sorry. we've Janice, got a comment. Janice wants to know, how do you get your name down on the spin to win wheel? J Janice, did you say? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Janice wants to know how you get your name on the winner's spinner. Well, Janice, every Thursday on the Balls to Cancer page and on my page, we post clues as to who our special guest is. And whoever guesses right, their name will go on the spinner. And then we do a live spin of all the correct dancers. So keep them peeled next week um, for the clues. And you can guess away, and then your name will be put on the spinner's, spinners list. So anything else from over there? While you lot are happily eating my chocolates? I'm eating my bag. I've just had my glass and spy one for my birthday. No, no more practice. Oh, bless you all. Well, listen, thank you so much for everyone for watching again. And thank you to the amazing Steve Clamp. And thank you for my children for obviously, you know, leaving it 55 minutes before they start playing up. Um, <laughs> thank you for the PA for putting the names in the spinner. And I love you all. And I'm sorry I've been a little bit, you know, a little bit emotional today. But no doubt I'll be. Oh, I just see an alarm in the background happens doesn't it but you know i have cheered up and i love you all loads and until what is he doing until next week bye hi what is he doing i can see you doing cartwheel <laughs> love yous